from Loretto Abbey, home to the Sisters of Loretto since 1928, and the Loretto Abbey Secondary School, and with the kind cooperation of the Toronto Catholic District School Board, the National Catholic Broadcasting Council presents Daily Mass. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. The grace and peace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of the Father, the friendship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Welcome to the celebration of this televised Mass on this feast of St. Ignatius of Antioch. My name is Father Michael Coots. The televising of this Mass is made possible by a contribution from Grace Festival from Pathways Retirement Home in, so in Sault Ste. Marie, Ontario. This Mass is offered for vocations to the priesthood and religious life in thanksgiving for the daily televised Mass and for the return to the faith of her family members. Our thanks to Grace Festival for the gift of televising this Mass to the faithful of Canada and across the world. And now to prepare ourselves to celebrate this Eucharist more worthily, let us call to mind the fact that we have a God who loves and forgives us. You were sent to heal the contrite, Lord have mercy. You came to call sinners, Christ have mercy. You plead for us at the right hand of the Father, Lord have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins and bring us to everlasting life. Let us pray. Almighty, ever-living God, who adorn the sacred body of your church with the confessions of the holy martyrs, grant that as the glorious passion of St. Ignatius of Antioch, which we celebrate today, brought him to eternal splendor, so it may be for us an unending protection through Christ our Lord. A reading from the letter of Paul to the Galatians. If you were led by the Spirit, you were not subject to the law. Now the works of the flesh are obvious. Fornification, impurity, licentiousness, idolatry, sorcery, enmities, strife, jealousy, anger, quarrels, dissensions, factions, envy, drunkenness, carousing, and things like these. I am warning you as I warned you before, those who do such things will not inherit the kingdom of God. By contrast, the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, generosity, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. There is no law against these things. Those who belong to Christ Jesus have crucified the flesh with its passions and desires. If we live by the Spirit, let us also be guided by Christ. The word of the Lord. the path 
The Lord be with you. And with your A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Lord, you, Lord. The Pharisee who had invited Jesus to dinner was amazed to see that Jesus did not first wash before eating. Then the Lord said to him, Woe to you, Pharisees, for you tithe mint and rue and herbs and of all kinds and neglect justice and the love of God. It is these you ought to have practiced without neglecting others. Woe to you, Pharisees, for you love to eat the seat of honor in the synagogues and to be greeted with respect in the marketplaces. Woe to you, for you are like unmarked graves, and people walk over them without realizing it. One of the lawyers answered him, Teacher, when you say these things, you insult us too. And Jesus said, Woe, to you, woe also to you, lawyers, for you load people with burdens hard to bear, and you yourself do not lift a finger to ease them. The Gospel of the Lord. My dear people of God, on the, 14th, on the 17th of October, when I was a little child, we celebrated the feast of St. Margaret Mary Alacoque. She was a visitation nun in Paralimonial in France, and she had visions of the Sacred Heart and promoted this great devotion to the Sacred Heart. This was very important to me for two reasons. And the first was that my parents consecrated our entire family to the Sacred Heart. And believe me, we received a lot of protection and support in very tangible ways. When soon after I was born, my father had nearly had a, fa had a near fa fatal sickness and he was cured from it. The second reason for this devotion being very dear to me was that St. Margaret Mary Alcock had a director called St. Claude de la Colombière, who was a Jesuit priest. And he taught her discernment, taught her to figure out whether these apparitions were sacred and coming from God, or whether they were hallucination and fake. And how would we recognize that? Now, Gia Eastman read so beautifully in our first reading today, the fruits of the Spirit are love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, generosity, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. If we had even one of these, we know that these apparitions, these vis visitations were truly genuine and sacred. And then when I was in the seminary, suddenly this feast of St. Margaret Mar Mary Alacoque was moved from the 17th of October to the 16th and then back to the 20th of October. And we have the feast of St. Ignatius of Antioch. St. Ignatius of Antioch was a little child while Jesus was preaching in Galilee. And he died a martyr in the year 107 in the Trajan persecution. 
Now, the beautiful thing about St. Ignatius of Antioch was while St. Margaret Mary Alacoc had visions and everything was spiritual, one writer has described St. Ignatius of Antioch as being very earthy. It was flesh and bone and blood. And because he had a great devotion to the Eucharist, that he would speak in these terms. He was caught and he was sent all the way from Asia Minor to Rome to be eaten, to be devoured by the lions in the Colosseum. And he had people who were great friends of his who had influence with even Trajan, and they said that we, they were going to get him a reprieve, and he wrote to them, please do not. I am the wheat of God, which must be crushed by the teeth of the beast in order to become the pure bread of God. In the second century, the time of Ignatius of Antioch, there were so many martyrs, and he would have been just one of the many. In fact, there were so many martyrs, some of them were called by numbers, Quintus and Sixtus and Septimus and Octavius. All these are, are numbers. We don't even know their names. But Ignatius of Antioch was very famous for two things. One, while he was taken from Asia Minor to Rome, he wrote six letters to different churches. Two of them are very familiar to us because even Paul wrote those letters to these churches, to the, to the Ephesians and to the Romans. But there were others whose names are rather strange to us, the Thralians and Magnesians and Christadelphians and uh, the Smyrnians. And what was very important about these letters was we began to see how the early church began to understand the whole idea of the Eucharist and how theology was gradually being unfolded. Now, when St. Ignatius wrote these letters, he was on the move. So it's more or less like a blog. It doesn't have any specific plan. And sometimes his sentences go on and on and on and on. And he'll jump from one topic to another. But it is very important to see what were the main things that bothered the early Christians. And one of them was precisely the Eucharist and the understanding of the Eucharist. Truly, the bread that was blessed was the body of Christ. Truly, the cup that was shed was the blood of Christ shed for our salvation. Now, at that time, there was a group of heretical Christians who kept on saying, you know, Christ is truly God, but he's not really a man. He had a mirage of a man. He had an appearance of a man. And St. Ignatius of Antioch was very, very strong about this. I'll just quote one of the small passages from the letter to the Thralians. And he says, Christ descended from David. He was truly born of Mary. He really ate and drank. He was really persecuted under Pontius Pilate and truly died by crucifixion while heavenly and earthly beings and those under the earth looked on. He truly rose from the dead and, being raised by the and was being raised by the Father. Those who believe in him will be raised like him by the Father, and we shall rise again in Christ, without whom we do not have true life. And so Ignatius says, turn a deaf ear to the talk of anyone whose language deals nothing with Jesus Christ. Truly, it was a man who was convinced of what Jesus said on, uh, while he was teaching, and we read it in the sixth chapter of John's Gospel. Unless you eat of the flesh of the Son of Man and drink of his blood, you will not have life within you. And people didn't quite like that. The whole idea of the cross and the crucifixion was something they could not handle. And so St. Ignatius of Antioch told us that what we eat is what we become. And what we become is we are imbued with the Spirit of Christ. And if we are imbued with the Spirit of Christ, then we cannot abuse anybody else or abuse ourselves. We have to respect them. The 17th of October will go down in history for not the reason of St. Ignatius of Antioch, but because today 
pot or marijuana will be legalized and people will be smoking it and people will be under the influence. This is not the time to discuss the reasons for or against, but Colorado had decriminalized marijuana four years ago, and there have been a lot of accidents taking place, and statistics have shown that 70% of these accidents were because they were under the influence of the drugs. And so on a day like today, we ask St. Ignatius of Antioch to intercede for us that we may be imbued with the spirit of Christ and not that which comes out of smoking weed. God bless you all. Join me now as we pray together. For Pope Francis and all those responsible for our spiritual welfare in teaching us the right paths, we pray to the Lord. For those who hold public office and for those who assist them in promoting the common good, we pray to the Lord. For those who travel by sea, land, or air, for captives and all held in prison, we pray to the Lord. For Grace Festival, our sponsor today, and for her intentions, and for the intentions of all those who have written and asked to be included in our televised prayer list, we pray to the Lord. May the petitions of your church be pleasing in your sight, O Lord, so that we may receive from your mercy what we cannot ask out of confidence in our own merits. We make this prayer through Christ our Lord. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have this bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have this wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become for us our spiritual drink. Pray, my sisters, my brothers, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. <laughs> may the oblations and our homage be pleasing to you, O Lord, just as you accepted St. Ignatius of Antioch, the wheat of Christ, made pure bread through his martyrdom and passion. We make this prayer through Christ our Lord. Amen. <coughs> the Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Lord, Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is, right it is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For the blood of your blessed martyr, Ignatius of Antioch, poured out like Christ to glorify your name, shows forth your marvelous works, by which in our weakness you perfect your power, and on our feeble bestow strength to bear you witness through our Lord Jesus Christ. And so with the powers of heaven, we worship you constantly on earth, and before your majesty without end, we sing.
You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice. Once more giving thanks, he gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis our Pope, Thomas our Bishop, the bishops across Canada, and this entire people of God. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Saint Joseph, her spouse, with the, blessed, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. <clears throat> through him, with him, and in him, O God, almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. 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 At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we now dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, from every evil, graciously grant peace in our day, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin, safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Let us share with one another a sign of this peace and friendship.
Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. May the body and blood of Christ bring us all to everlasting life. Would those of you at home join with me now in this prayer for the dying? May Christ, who was crucified for your sake, free you from excruciating pain. May Christ, who died for you, free you from the death that never ends. May Christ, the Son of the living God, set you in the evergreen loveliness of his paradise. And may he, the true shepherd, recognize you as one of his own. And so, having taken your place in the ranks of the blessed, may you enjoy the happiness of heaven forever and ever. Amen. Let us pray. May the heavenly bread we have received, O Lord, on the feast of St. Ignatius of Antioch renew us and make us Christians in name and in deed. We make this prayer through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Mass has been celebrated. Go now in the peace of Christ. Our thanks to our donor for the gift of this Mass. Please remember that all requests for prayers are included in our Prayer Intentions book and shared with all of our celebrants. <laughs>